Hello, this is Hiro Tashima. I teach ceramics at the college in Tucson, Arizona, and um, I'm originally from Japan. And uh, I work with figurative sculpture in ceramics and also make functional work. And these are some of the examples of my work, so I can show you why I'm doing this kind of thing and my background also. Uh, this is me when I was working, invited to work in uh, Valerie's France in 2008. And I was there in 2015 or so. Uh, Valerie's is a town where Picasso used to work uh, in the late 50s. And the United States is about 20 times bigger than Japan and land-wise. Here's Japan, that's the United States. But the population is about half of the United States living in this tiny little land, island. And so, uh, in, how to say, the uh, uh, people per square feet is so much different. Uh, so very dense in Japan. And uh, I grew up in Osaka, which is the second biggest city. And then Tokyo has uh, about uh, 11 million people, more bigger than New York City. And uh, 5 million is like LA, but again, uh, land itself is so much smaller. So uh, it's actually more crowded than New York City. And um, Tokyo has a uh, most world complicated subway system. They have a nine story deep, so they don't collide in underneath of the ground. And I was born in Hiroshima. And you may have a story about the atomic bomb, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Those are the places there. And uh, Japan is a mixed culture, east and west. Uh, if you got to go to work in uh, uh, rush hour, you don't want to drive there because it's just too much cars and you don't get there on time, too much traffic jam. And so people got into the train like this and then uh, every two minutes there are many um, trains coming in and then these cars are filled with the people. So it's so crowded like this. And uh, if you go to countryside, you see some people wearing kimonos. And then this is Tokyo, more than a million, you have a mirror, like I said, and uh, you may have seen this uh, in the movies and stuff, you know, highways and subways and uh, all the signs and um, neon signs and Japanese characters and such. And then Kyoto is one of the oldest capital of Japan and uh, they have some uh, many tradition and culture was still preserved. This is Kinkaguchi uh, Pavilion. This was built in uh, 790 AD. So um, it's, been, uh, it's been there for a while. This is uh, two big uh, religion in Japan. Shinto uh, is a Japanese origin religion. And then Buddhism came to Japan around third century uh, with the Chinese characters. And so uh, this is a huge Buddha inside. They have uh, 550 tons of bronze they use and they have about dust big. You can see the human beings only did a little thing and uh, they use 290 pints of gold. And this is Hiroshima, the place I was born and uh, more than 20,000 people died from one bomb. And uh, my grandfather was firefighter in Hiroshima and the day before atomic, uh, the day before atomic bomb was dropped in August 5th, he, he got a telegram from his grandmother that she was uh, sick, so he got permission to go see her. And he was going to come back that night, but uh, her, his grandmother hid his bike, his bicycle, so he couldn't go back to the train station on time. So he missed the last train. And on the next morning, August 6th, when he was trying to go to work at 8.15, Anthony Bomb got dropped. So he saw the mushroom crowd and a huge sound from a distance. And then uh, he got into the uh, military jeep with uh, uh, his uh, fire department ID. And um, by the time he went to the city, all his colleagues was in skeleton because ground zero reached about 6,000 degrees. You know, nothing could survive. And uh, Hiroshima uh, Peace Memory Park is still there, you can see. And uh, people ask me, I must be culture shock when I came to the United States, but not really. When I grew up, uh, the year I was born in 69, 1969, McDonald's came to Japan. So we were I grew up in the kind of Americanized Japanese um, societies. And then this is Osaka at night. You can see, you know, many skies and, uh, you know, uh, lights everywhere. It's much more crowded than New York City. And this is me when I was Children's Day. We don't wear kimonos only in special occasions. And uh, this is me on, when I was five. He, my brother was three. And I started learning English from my mother when I was in fifth and sixth grade. I started listening to the same music from uh, yeah, I was listening to this music and uh, it says uh, so 
I learned these two songs from uh, this song and uh, when I was uh, sixth grade. And uh, I never thought I would get a job in Tucson to you know teach art and live in this town. Now, I used to race with the uh, motorcycle. I still ride motorcycle every day. Um, but road bike racing, you need the uh, uh, money, but skill, but you also need a lot of money because whenever you turn up the bikes or we crash it, you have to spend so much money to fix it and such. And these. Bikes 1100 are so fast, it can go to speed you can fly about 190 miles an hour. And so it's about uh, 280 kilometers per hour, almost 300 kilometers. And so that's pretty fast. And, um, uh, but I was just a high school kid with part time job, and then the rich kid started to win, and I thought, that's not fair. And then uh, I started to race with dirt bike racing. And it's, it's not about the bike anymore because your bike is already way too powerful for the dirt. It's a matter of how you make your motorcycle grip the ground to go faster. And it's a devotion, you know. Um, so I used to race a lot when I don't have a class at school. And then I went a lot of races and broke so many bones. And then um, after you broke so many bones, you know, you start to win the race. And so I have a lot of in my house. And then um, I approached art in the same way. I have a lot of pieces. And then um, I show my piece in a group show, magazine, and TV show start to happen. You know, awards and grants, and a public collection, public art. Things start to happen. So um, that's how I approached to art. And then I uh, came to visit the United States for the first time when I was 20 years old uh, to visit my friend's house. And uh, my mother was teaching English, so she became friends with this. Um, we became friends with this guy, um, Daniel. He was a Mormon missionary, and we are not religious, but uh, he was. You know, we when we don't have uh, time, when we don't have anything, any jobs, we are doing uh, going to the barbecue and river and stuff like that. So after two years, he invited me to visit his house in Utah, and I was totally surprised because Japan, as you saw, was all houses, houses everywhere. But here in Arizona, I mean, the Utah. Just nothing. It's just open ground. It's like so different. And I met some uh, people who studied abroad. I thought, oh, study abroad may be interesting. And at that time, um, I love this kind of scenery and open landscape around here in Arizona. And then uh, I was at that time an uh, undergrad student in Osaka University of the Arts. And so I found my school has a sister college program. So I wanted to go to abroad and uh, study abroad. So I uh, applied and I got accepted and I came to Baltimore, uh, Maryland, uh, Baltimore, uh, Maryland. And uh, uh, when I was there, um, the school had uh, so many um, classes I could take, figure sculpture, ceramics, uh, stone carving, wood carving. I learned a great deal. And then I made this piece called Western Influence. And there was a student show. And then uh, this piece got best of the show. And I was so surprised. I was talking about my generation of Japanese people trying to be like American. And then he has Chomage Samurai hairstyle, so he's Japanese inside. So that was my piece. And then after I finished my one year, I went back to Japan to finish my degree in Japan. This is my thesis work. And uh, this is Shigaraki Ceramic Culture Park in Japan. Uh, Japanese school is April, ending April, and the American school doesn't start till July. And I was already accepted for grad school in America, but I had a few months break, so I went to, uh, I was accepted to go to Shigaraki Ceramic Culture Park. You stay one of these places and then they have a kiln room, they open 24 hours, they have museum up on the hill, they have local ceramic supply, uh, exhibition halls and stuff. So it was a great place to visit and then many, uh, see many artists from, uh, visiting artists from the United States. Um, this is, um, and then I get, I came back to Alfred, New York as a grad student. And so I started to make these pieces in life size. And then, um, I had a, for my first solo show in New York uh, at Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, and uh, after I finished my first year of grad school, and uh, people just came into my work and bought my stuff. This was on the Fifth Avenue near next to the uh, Gucci and Tiffany, all kind of expensive stores, and I was so surprised. What's going on with this? I'm just grad school student from nowhere. And then um, this is my second year. I started to make a larger than life size figure with the clay. And then um, this is my thesis show. I made four life larger than life size pieces, and I have several pieces in uh, ceramics. And then I brought everything in my U-Haul truck with my motorcycle and had a show in Soho, in Manhattan. So south of Houston Street, they used to, they used to have a 
uh, Guggenheim Museum Soho also, and it was very arts active in the, in the 90s. And then uh, he came to one day to the museum, to the gallery, and my friend said, oh, he looks like David. Oh, he's not David. Why? Well, he's here. I didn't know he had a house in Ethiopia. And then um, he talked to us for more than a half hour, and then uh, he bought some my work afterwards. Get things done. Then uh, a year later, he called me up in my studio and said, are you interested in putting your work in my website? I was like, good, obviously. I was like, wow, this is great, you know. It was still back in uh, 1996, uh, so uh, the website art setting was not quite happening. And so it was very uh, great to see how uh, he can do this uh, website. And uh, we saw quite a bit on his website. Then I had a show, I started to do an installation piece in a uh, Varick Museum in Las Vegas. So I had to cross country from Philadelphia to bring this piece to a museum in Las Vegas. And then I was um, helping this international ceramic workshop in, uh, in Tokoname called Wood Firing. So I met uh, different artists from all over the world and that was an interesting experience. And then one year Paul Solner came as a visiting artist. Paul is this guy here. And uh, he's uh, known as a father figure for American ceramics. He introduced an American Raku style to um, American uh, ceramic artists. And so when we were in onsen in hot spring, uh, we were bathing and then uh, he said, hey, everybody stand up. So we had to <laughs> stand up. But I didn't want it to hurt your eyes, I put the black line there. And uh, so I like to you know, do some wood firing in my work also sometimes. And then I, this was a, a piece I got a grant from uh, Phoenix Arts Commission, and uh, it's called Last Supper. So this is all ceramics. Mother is talking to father. He's not listening. He listens to the paper. And then son is not listening either. He's eating instant noodle. And then sister is not uh, participating in the dinner also. She's maybe sexually harassed and then died and there's dinner for her on the table. So this is uh, from our, uh, you know, recent uh, event. You know, we used to, Kind of communicate to each other on the dinner time. You know, mother asks the son what's happening today and so forth. But these families are not communicating anymore. Just doing their own things in their own time. And I was invited to work in different uh, artists in residence places in Banff in Canada, in uh, Quebec in Canada, in, uh, France, Paris, and Hungary, and Australia, and uh, Denmark, and Shigaraki, and and the. Uh, uh, China and uh, so I've been to um, interesting to play interesting places and uh, making these pieces and this was a workshop I was invited to work in uh, Hainan China in 19. Hainan is an island uh, it's like a Hawaii for Chinese people they are very warm down there and they can surfing in November and I do some public art also these are some of the bigger pieces uh, this is for Phoenix uh, Sky Harbor Airport this is for the Jacobs Park in Tucson, and uh, made this uh, mural piece for the Mission Library, and then uh, this is for the Phoenix Convention Center piece. And um, people ask me how much is most expensive pieces sold in uh, ceramics. So this is a hundred thousand dollar project. So that was quite a big price, and uh, it took uh, me uh, several years to make this piece. This is all life-size figures and then 15 feet tall cactus with the steel structure inside. So you can see this in Phoenix Convention Center. And uh, I do some uh, another public art in Tucson. This is First Avenue Navajo in Tucson. And then Michael Perry Park in Tucson, Dunbar neighborhood. And then uh, Naranja Park, they have this one. And I did the Orovare Community Center entrance. Just finished the uh, uh, Valencia Road in Tucson with the six, um, sorry, eight animal benches with the shade. And I do some smaller work for galleries and museum. I started to do some uh, organic banana series because uh, I'm yellow outside and speak English, kind of white inside. So that's what I use this banana for everything. And uh, I had a big show in the Shinjuku Takashimaya Gallery in Tokyo in April 2011. This is right after the earthquake. Uh, so that was amazing how uh, the building was still kind of shaking after, you know, so that was kind of uh, strange feelings and not many people in the street and so forth. 
And then I do some uh, solo show. This was in Tokyo, um, Dunayan and Osaka direct. It's a how about that kind of show. And uh, I made some pieces in Quebec and brought it back to Japan. And then uh, Tatsu Kamon uh, is my favorite singer from Osaka. He was he came to see the show and then uh, this was on his website. And uh, I made the uh, piece about his novel. So I made this in, this is in his house and bring it to the piece. So this is uh, Tatsu Kamon there. And then I started to do um, King Kong series. And um, instead of Yellow Monkey, I became a King Kong here. And instead of a Bronco, I'm holding this uh, Dogu figure from Japan. And instead of Jet Fire, I'm holding a B-29 with atomic bomb because I'm from Hiroshima. And um, this is a Beatles cassette tape I was listening to to learn English. And so this is a Beatles songs. And this piece was um, set for the Tucson Music Art in the Arizona Vinyl Show. And uh, it's talking about uh, all of this love. Um, you know, we want to help each other and then you just need to understand each other, not just like. Then this is a piece I was uh, started to make in the Shigaraki in 2019, in eight days. I started to work with uh, feet going up to the waist and go to the two pieces, and then start to make some flowers. And then this is a piece inside of a kiln came out, and then finished glazing. And this piece was selected for Amino International Ceramic Competition this year, so it will be shown in Japan. And I do some uh, I work for museums and galleries and smaller pieces too. This is a smaller pieces for the um, galleries, family dining, tea ceremony, hot spring, China buffet. Also gotta have a green tea matcha series with a teapot and a Japanese sweet um, American version with the green tea frappuccino with the paper tray with chocolate chip cookies. This is a show I had in uh, Bangkok, Thailand uh, last month. So these are my work. Thank you for watching.